Yo. You, you, you are now listening to the smoking section. Oh, yeah. Or oh, you'll find hot topics. And fire conversations. Hey, keep it locked. You hear me? Well, hello, wonderful people. How are you guys doing today? This is your host, Big Corpse, and this is the smoking section. Yeah, where we bring you hot topics and fire conversation brought to you exclusively by CorpseCollection.com. Make sure you guys go check it out. We got new items. <laughs> Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the spiel. So check it out. Um, doing these IG submissions per usual. It, um, I've had a good one come through. I haven't done one like this in a long time. So it's really exciting because this was one that... um. This is one that kind of touches close to the heart um, because I went through a huge journey as far as like, as far as like myself and my own development. But this one is talking about, you know, again, relationships. And the topic is, is how long should I wait until I'm in a relationship? And this has to do with a very specific situation, but I think this can be applied to a wide variety of different like circumstances. So let me just take it from the top. Um, on an IG submission, I had somebody ask me how long should they wait until they're in a relationship? And, you know, me being the little curious critter that I am, um, I had to ask some more questions. Um, this person had been in a relationship for about five years. Um, wonderful relationship. They were, you know, living together and just doing everything together and building the foundation for a life as a relationship together. And... Um, it did end abruptly through um, some extracurricular activities. Yeah. Um, one person was caught cheating and it just brought the demise of the relationship. Now, granted, not to place blame on any one person or anything like that, because there's always a multitude of things that happen in, inside of a relationship, right? They they spend too much money. They're drinking too much. They're smoking too much weed. They party too much not giving enough attention, not giving enough, you know, affection, not affirming their beliefs or, or whatever, right? There's always a list of things, but no matter what, if you are asking me, and this is advice that I received from my lovely mother. If you're asking me, let's say you're in a relationship, let's just take one year. You should do half of that, right? The advice I received from my mother was take half the time that you were in that relationship to at least be single, at least half, right? Um, and so that sucks for some of us who were in 10-year relationships, eight-year, nine-year, 12 years, whatever. But you should take at least up to half of the time that you were in that relationship to be single. Now, that doesn't mean not to court other people or, you know, um, go on some casual dates or whatever. But before you find yourself in a committed, serious relationship where you're saying, hey, I want to build the rest of my life with you. Like, until you reach that point, you should be taking your time, right? Taking your time. And I know that's hard, right? We get lonely. We get horny right? Little horny little fucking critters as we are as human beings. And sometimes we meet people who just sweep us off our feet. They are everything and anything that we could have ever asked for in a partner or in somebody that, that we find ourselves with. They are these things, right? But here's, now here's the kicker, right? Here's the kicker. And this is why you should wait. I waited I waited almost two years exactly, two, two and a half years exactly before I looked at my girlfriend and said, hey, I really want something with you, right? Um, I told her out the gate when we first started kind of hanging out and doing our thing. Um, I told her straight up, like, I don't do casual dating, right? Like we can hang out and go get dinner and, and have a laugh, you know, smoke, drink and, and all this stuff. But if we're going to date, like I'm dating seriously. So I just want to paint that expectation. Um, 
and she was cool with it. So it was almost two and a half, almost two and a half years to the day where, where we looked at each other and said, this is what we're going to try to do. Um, for me, um, it took me a while to get there because I realized that in my past relationship, I was kind of deprived of things, right? I was deprived of communication. I was deprived of certain like affections. I was deprived of certain standards, you know, basic standards of love, right? That you should be receiving from your partner. Um, and the reason why people should take time is, is because when you begin to receive that from another person, so let's say you're in a relationship, right? And this person never made you feel, uh, made you feel confident, right? Never made you feel confident in your passions and the projects and that you pursue, or they never made you feel confident, you know, in your, your appearance, right? Maybe they always said things like, like, uh, like, oh, you should do something about your weight or, oh, I wish you were taller or, oh, I wish these things or, oh, if only you had, you know, straighter teeth or whatever the fuck, right? Because there's some wild stuff I hear people say to their partners. And so I'm just throwing out some examples. Um, but the moment you get somebody into your life, we're like, oh my God, you're beautiful. Or, oh my God, you're handsome. You're so handsome. You're the most handsomest person I've ever seen. So when you start to receive this, it, that the filling of that hole that was left from your previous relationship, that the, the sensation that you receive from that is so fucking profound. It is so profound and so impactful that it may take a bigger, um, it may have a bigger impact on you and, and your ability to, your ability to cipher whether or not this person is good for you or not. Right. So especially out of a fresh relationship, if you went from somebody who never complimented you, who never, you know, who never affirmed you certain things about your life or about who you are, if you then turn around and then find someone who may do those things, one, they may not be able to do that consistently. Right. They may be in a little puppy dog phase, right, that puppy love phase and may just be like you know, overextending themselves, right? So again, if you really like this person, give it three, four, five months before you say, hey, I think I might actually like this person or hey, I might actually want to do something more with this person, right? Because it takes about six months from what I've seen and what I've learned. It takes about six months for people to really show their true colors, whether it's consistency, behavior, habits, whatever. It takes about six months to really see that. So just take time. Yeah. Take time to understand these things. Um, because like I'm saying, they may be able to give you these compliments. They may be able to be able to give you all this different like assurances about yourself that might not be able to stand the test of time. Now for myself, I try to make sure that I tell my girlfriend that she's beautiful at least once a day. Right. But every time we're on the phone, every time we FaceTime, I always tell her, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Like the moment she picks up the phone, it's, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so beautiful. How am I so lucky? Right. And it's not that I don't believe it. Right. Because I believe it. I believe it wholeheartedly. And I, I believe that she believes it. Right. I believe that she believes that I believe it. Right. All of that. But it doesn't hurt to remind her of that on a consistent basis. Loneliness, right, is also a very powerful thing, right? So take time to be lonely. Take time to sit alone in your thoughts. Take time to, like, to be with the self so that you can, so that you could properly see, right? So that you could properly see when these little tricksters and hucksters come along, okay? Because... Just because they like you doesn't mean that they're going to like you forever. And just because they like you doesn't mean that they have your best interests at hand. So take time to be alone. The, the biggest reason behind that is so that you never fear being alone, right? 
before I met, again, before I met my girlfriend, I was single. I was single. Yeah, I dated this girl and dated that girl. Never really took it serious, right? We went on a couple dates and that was that, was that you know? But with her, I'm really giving myself to her. I'm putting forth this effort and trying to build a life and establish this relationship. Yeah. Um, but I don't fear being alone. Would it devastate me if me and her broke up? Would I be heartbroken? Would I be sad? Of course. But would I be afraid of being alone? No. No. I have I have the man in me to say that. And I know it's the same for her. She's she's not going to be afraid to be alone. She's a strong girl. She's a strong, independent woman. And so being alone for her, I know, wouldn't be a thing, right? I mean, let alone that she's beautiful, right? And could probably move on easily. Um, maybe not in the healthiest way, right? But could she move on? Yeah. And do I think that she would be afraid to be alone? Absolutely not. She's a strong girl. She's a very strong woman. And it's something that attracts me to her. Yeah. Uh, but loneliness... The fear of loneliness is is detrimental to the human uh, to the human condition. Yeah, we stay in relationships way longer than we should. We put up with people way longer than we should. I mean, even I mean, not even just sexual relationships, you know, or intimate relationships like relationships with our family. We put up with relationships with our family so much because we're afraid of losing them or we're afraid of being alone without them right it's like oh it's my sister i need I, uh, it's like no dude like sometimes cutting people off comes in so many different forms and one huge form is our our family and it's sad to say yeah uh how long should we wait into relation until we're in a relationship is is i think the biggest one of the biggest and simplest answers is is is, is until you're ready right um, one thing that, one thing that I've battled with, um, especially with myself is, is, uh, I moved kind of quickly from one relationship to another, like, um, when I was dating my son's, my son's mom, um, I went from one relationship then dating her kind of quickly. Um, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit these things, right? It doesn't make me a bad person. Um, you know, what I did in my past doesn't define me. Right. But it kind of explains how I got to where I am. Um, but I moved from one relationship to another kind of quickly. Um, and I found and she did, too. Right. She did, too. And so we found and I only bring that up is because we found each other kind of comparing each other to our past relationships, which is not cool. You know what I mean? Um, and those comparisons look different ways. Oh, I don't like that you do this because so and so did that. Or oh, I don't like when you wear this because so and so wore that. And that is just not good for a relationship. Bringing up your exes and bringing up these past experiences that you had with them, it's just not healthy for your relationship. It's something that you should avoid at all costs and bringing up your ex. Um it is okay to have like traumatic responses, right? Especially if there was something like really, really traumatic that happened to you. Um, like, let's say like domestic violence. So if you say, so like me, I love to grab my girlfriend's face, right? Especially for like, kind of like in an intimate, you know, intimate moment. And I'm trying to show her that I love her. I love to touch her face. I love to touch like her collarbone and her neck. I love to put my hands like on her, right? Um, I'm a very physical being. I like to touch. Um, touching, physical touch is a huge, like, huge love language for me. Um, and it comes from, you know, me being a wrestler at one point. Um, you know, I fell in love with the art of wrestling and grappling and, and learning how to turn my body and turn someone else's body to make it do the things that I wanted to do. Right? So my physical, my physical attraction with that is, is if I'm touching your face in a soft and gentle way, I'm actually submitting to you. I'm saying here, like, feel me, feel me against you. Right. Um, and she had problems with that at, at, at points. Yeah. Um, and there was other girls I've dated in the past too, who also had problems with that one girl that I knew, um, not a girlfriend of mine, but a girl that I knew, um, used to used to get beat up by her boyfriend 
right? And so there would be times, like, again, like, if I'm showing affection, I'll put my arm around you or something, you know what I mean? Because if, if I don't like you, I don't want you touching me. Like, please just don't touch me, right? Like, even, like, friends, like, 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 associates, like, don't touch me. But friends, like, hug me. You get what I'm saying? So when I would hug her or put my arm around her, like, in, in an embrace, um, she would get, like, weird. Um, and she didn't like it. And it took me a while to understand that she was just having a, tra- a, a trauma response to the things that were happening to her um, and had happened to her. Um, so there's certain things that you can't, you're not just going to wake up one day and get over it. Right. But there are certain things that we have to work on before we say, okay, okay, I'm, I'm okay to get into a relationship. Now I'm not saying that, people who have who have uh, suffered domestic violence that they'll ever get over the physical abuse that they went through right but get but you have to work yourself into a space to where you can allow your partner to show that type of love to you right whether it's a tight embrace or you know pulling you closely you know certain things of the physical aspect you have to be in the mind state to be able to allow those things right Because that's how somebody is giving love. If that's the way that they give love, we have to learn to accept that love. One thing, one thing that I've learned in this relationship that I'm in has been to learn, to learn to love her in a way that she understands, right? And to allow her to love me in a way that she understands. And this is something that we're both working on. She's really working on allowing me to love her in the way that I, that I know how, right. And for her to give me love in a way that I understand easily, right. I'm not big on receiving gifts. And that is one of my girlfriend's love languages. That's how she likes to give love is by giving gifts. Um, You know, it's not always like materialistic, this, that was in the third, but I'm just not good. I I've just never, it's like, not that I don't appreciate it. Right. But I'm, I'm cool with you just telling me you love me. I'm cool with you telling me, you know, how special I am to you or the things that I do that make you happy. Right. It's those words of affirmation that, that I love. Right. And so she's getting better with sharing her love with me that way. And I am getting better with understanding that when she gives me even such a little gift, right. Whether it's like a Snickers Reese's payday, whatever, like this little token is from her heart. It's her loving me. And it's taken me a while and it's, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning. We're still in this process of learning these love languages. And I hope, I mean, I hope that learning process never stops. I hope me and her always, always, always find more ways to love each other and find a deeper understanding of love for each other. Uh, she's she's a special type i'm a special type right and i think we could have both done better with taking some more time in our relationship yeah um so even as i was saying earlier i took a lot of time before i got into this relationship and i still feel like i could have taken more time right to learn her more and all these things but now that learning is now just a part of our process of being together so there's no right or wrong answer so i don't want people to be like listen to this podcast and be like oh well i was in a relationship for you know two years but i really like this girl but it hasn't been a year so i'm not going to be with her no 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 if it's been eight months man it's it's eight months it's fine you will know right but just do these mental check-ins you know am i am i still feeling the trauma responses of my last relationship is the baggage of my last relationship still weighing on me do i still feel insecure by the things my last partner did with me or to me do i feel safe in my own skin do i feel safe being alone or or am i afraid of being alone what what those answers are a telltale sign of how ready you are to be in a relationship i went off on a crazy tangent right now so i hope some of y'all write this down and let me know how y'all feel (laughs) um but there's like there's a list of check-ins there's a list of check-ins that you should do with yourself. Um, the biggest, my biggest thing with these check-ins 
is, is that you just have to be brutally honest about where you're at mentally. You have to be brutally honest where you are at emotionally and mentally, physically, all these things. Um, if they're saying something or doing something that's beginning to trigger you, right, and it's because of a past relationship, that's something you need to check in with yourself about. And of course, voice it to them, but you can't bog down your relationship because of it, right? There's some healing that you should have still been doing before you got a little more committed into the current relationship that you're in. Not to say that you can't heal with the person you're with or that you can't continue to try to love or be loved by someone while you're still healing. I'm not saying that at all, right? And again, I'm not a licensed therapist. This is just me mansplaining the way that I feel, right? But you got to you got to make sure that you're in your own capacity to love and be loved, right? Um, I noticed with myself that with the people that I was in these, these like, you know, semi, semi dating phases with, um, it was really hard for me to receive their love. I just felt that they were planning on hurting me or that they were just going to leave or they're going to cheat or whatever because of what I went through in my past. And so it made it very hard for them to love me. Therefore, it was hard for me to feel loved. And and in the end, it just didn't work out. We couldn't come to a compromise. We couldn't come to an understanding of where we were at as a relationship. And, you know, we just parted ways. Thankfully, before we both got too involved and thankfully before anyone got their feelings, you know, seriously hurt. Um, but to, you got to take it day by day. Yeah. I mean, I met my girlfriend and I fell head over heels for her from first sight. And um, I was very eager to move forward with everything that we were doing. Right. Because like I said, I took my time and stuff. And um, and I was really ready to be in a um, have been will and I have been and am ready for this, for this, for the serious relationship that me and her are building together. Um, she was at a different point in her life. And because she needed time to warm up to me and because she needed time to work through the things that she was working through, it helped me. It caused me to pump my brakes. And so we've slowly, slowly, gingerly walked through this relationship together. And um, it's been beautiful. And we still have our own things to work through as a relationship. There are still traumas that we are both dealing with um, caused by like our childhood traumas and the way we were raised and the way that we interacted with our parents and siblings. And um, it's been a journey, right? So I'm not saying that you can't heal with a person or that you can't do all these things. Uh, but just make sure that when you're getting into this relationship, you look at yourself and say, am I going to emotionally dump? Am I going to project my insecurities onto these people? Do we share the same values? Do we have, um, irreconcilable differences when it comes to politics or when it comes to raising our children or when it comes to, you know, professions and job choices, you know, habits, Right. Uh, I couldn't be with somebody who drank every single day. I can't be with someone who's drunk every day. Drinking is not a problem. It's not a deal breaker. But if you're drunk every single day, can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Refuse to. Right? Um, I need somebody who's busy. Right? Um, of course, like I've told Rosie. Uh, God, I hate saying her name on this fucking thing. Uh, but I've told my girlfriend. Um I don't mind if you're a stay at home mom, but you have to be busy, right? Like you have to be, you have to have some kind of side project. You've got to have a passion project that you're working on. I cannot come home to somebody who's been sitting around all day while I go work a laborious job. Can't do it. Won't do it. Refuse to do it. Got it. Got to be a better way. Therefore, therefore, when you're looking at yourself, Before you get into the relationship, I want to say this. Before you think about seriously dating somebody, write out what you want from a a partner. 
write out all the things that you want. And it's okay if it's a long list. It's okay if it's a short one. But write out that list and then become that. Become the person, right? And when you embody what you want from a partner, you will know. You will look at that person from across the dinner table and you'll know. And it's okay. Maybe they're beautiful and the sex is great and all these things, but cut it off at the wrist, player. Like Sonny from the Bronx still said, break up with them, break up with them fast. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you all enjoyed my little talk. Yeah, uh, again, this was an IG submission. So if you want to get your topic on the show, hit me up at Corpse, that's K-O-R-P-S-X on Instagram. Follow me, I'll follow back right? And that's going to help get your message to me directly. Um, because if it falls into the requests, there's no, there's no telling when I might read it. So please go do that. Uh, let's get your topic on the show. Yeah, this has been the smoking section brought to you by Corpse Collection. I hope you guys all have an amazing day. Hope you have an amazing week, month, year, and life. Yeah. Until next time, I'll see all of you on the flip side. Stay motivated out there. Bang, 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 bang.